Greetings, Moonchild. I'm Morpheus, or Morphe, to those I want to see again. I know, looking at me, you wouldn't guess I was raised by a village of tieflings, or that I was kicked out of said village for less than saintly actions involving the head priest and his wife at different times. Say, I have this trick that the fairies taught me as a kid. I can walk right into your sweet little dreams. Oh, or not so sweet dreams, you naughty thing. I've made a few friends in my days, probably twice as many enemies, except that one time with the priestess of Tallow, she got exiled and, oh, never mind that story. I prefer the animals in Fae. They just get me, you know? Oh, the scars? Yeah, that was a bad day. I'm just as surprised I made it out as you are. Besides, they make me look fierce. They also remind me that I have seen that true betrayal can only be committed by someone close to you, someone you love. The rest of my circle weren't as lucky. I had some of my best memories with them, and now I'm the only one left, or the only one that I know of. Life is like a river. It never slows down for anyone. You either flow with it or get shaped by it. Guess which path I chose. Whiskerforge's parents lived in the dwarven settlement of Earthheart. Slow to be accepted into their neighborhood, they apprenticed Forge to Fiona Steelcloak, a smith of some skill. All was well until war hit their corner of the world, and young Whisker Forge struck out to help defend his homeland with the help of his ancestors. After the war and his apprenticeship, he started wandering the realms and helping people where he could. Along the way, he met Mira, a cleric of Salune. You actually notice me. That's strange. I'm no one of consequence. Millions of kids get left to their own devices on the streets every day. Especially human kids. I'm human, you know? Um, I figured out pretty quickly it's better for everybody involved if you don't notice me. That's why I left the city as fast as I could. Well, that and because I saw his face everywhere I went. Hi, I'm Zafu. Uh, I'm a young rogue half-orc, just basically trying to find my place in life. I grew up mostly on my own, uh, so basically I had to learn how to be sneaky and steal just to survive. I may not be the smartest dude around since really I didn't get a proper education, but I can handle my own. Uh, I enjoy a lot of alone time. I like a nice alcohol and I love kisses from ladies and men. The High Road. This highway hugs the coast, connecting Neverwinter to the coastal cities of Luskin to the north and Waterdeep to the south. For years, the stretch of road south of Neverwinter fell into disuse because of frequent monster attacks. Recently, efforts have been made to keep the road safe with light patrols of guards. Leyland. This small town along the high road is in the midst of rebuilding itself after being abandoned for years. It serves as the main base of the characters during this adventure. We are live, and we saw Haley's little thumbs up, or Faye's little thumbs up dance. That was great. Uh, welcome back to episode two. Yay! We are live. Hey. Hopefully, we don't have the tech issues that we had last that week. That would be real uh, exciting if uh, that was a thing. Um, but thank you guys for coming back and, and tuning in with us and bearing with us through all that. Um, let's let's okay. There's 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 stuff to do for the pre-show here. So let's go through our quick intros uh, and introduce ourselves. So I'm Sarah. I'm the CEO of Remalternus. Happy to be here. Happy to be GMing again and uh, excited to get started. And you've got a nasty echo. What happens? Um, apparently, we have an echo. We're going to try to fix it. Um, I so no worries Twitch there. Playing. I just muted it. That was my bad. Okay. Oh, oh so fired. <laughs> so fired. Good thing I don't get paid. <laughs> Make sure uh, everyone's got push to talk on and we'll be good to go. Let do um, let's do a Tony intro. 
Hey, I am Tony or Shlenny. Um, hi, Zach. I see you. Um, anyways, I am playing Whiskerforge, the seventh level um, barbarian cleric, and my pro personal pronouns are they. Awesome. And how about Faye? Hi guys, I am Faye, your super professional tech master with years of experience. I am playing Morpheus the Dreamwalker, the Circle of Dreams Druid and Moon Elf. And I am here to bring you confidence, sassiness, and a, the occasional dirty joke. I think it's going to be more than occasional. <laughs> from what I'm gathering. Uh, Christine, how about you? All right, uh, I'm Christine. I, like Tony, use they, them pronouns. Uh, and I am playing Lyron, the, uh, <laughs> the tiefling that may or may not survive the night. <laughs> we'll find out. That was a rough first episode for you. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, you see this shambling in the distance, and I did not expect you to be like, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Colin, how about you? Hello, I'm Colin. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I am playing Zarfu, who is a half-orc rogue. Awesome. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. All right, so before we dive into our game, a couple of things I want to share with you guys. First of all is uh, the Kickstarter. So we have six days left of our Kickstarter for Cuddle's Worst Clockwork Circus. We are at, oh, oh, I should have had this up, but I was not prepared. I was thinking about D&D &D for some reason. It was weird. Um, but we are at 8,400 buying myself time, $80 and 98 backers. So we are two away from our 100 goal and we're going to release a ton of art. So if you haven't pledged, please uh, check it out. Pledge. It is a uh, comic book that is steampunk fantasy and it's set in an all new original world but it's definitely uh tt rpg D, D inspired all of that stuff so you'll you'll recognize a lot of that in that and in uh in the layout of the kickstarter page our first stretch goal when we reach ten thousand dollars actually is to release uh D, D supplies supplemental materials so you can run your own adventure in the world of the comic book so the tokens of the characters maps from the city that they're in lots of cool stuff so check it out um so that's the kickstarter now let's talk about you guys chat oh i should look at my camera let's talk about you guys chat uh fix it in post um there are a couple of different ways that you can interact with us so every time that you follow uh, or subscribe or donate bits, it's going to affect the stream boss. So the stream boss right here on screen um, is going to take damage each time. And when it gets down to zero, your name gets put at the top of the stream boss list uh, name thing. And then everyone attacks you, I guess, next. And when it gets to zero, you, the chat, have a fighter character that will magically appear and punch the next bad guy and help out our cast with their fight, which Lyron could really use right now. So it's pretty great. Um, so bits, points, subs, follows, all that stuff is great. You can also uh, donate your channel points and bits to give inspiration, auto hits, and nat 20s to the cast as well. So we're going to drop that into our, our stream elements as well, um, so you know what you can donate and do. And then finally, for the first time ever, we are doing... Uh, giveaway right here on stream. So here are the rules. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. Um, we are giving away a swag bag of Rem Alternus stuff. So you're going to get a little dice bag with lots of goodies in it that I'm going to show you guys and share. Um, but how we do it. So right now, if you type in the chat, hashtag yay gay, that is one entry to win. Uh, for every subscribe that we get and subscribers of the channel already, if you type in your, your Yege, you um, are automatically qualified for this. Subscribers get seven points, seven entries, and any uh, donation of 100 bits or more um, gets, for every 100 bits, gets an entry. So uh, hashtag Yege to enter uh, that. And let's, let's, show, let's show all the, the, good, the goodies. I'm so excited. Ready? So 
first of all, we'll go from least to greatest here. So we start with some REM Alternus stickers. We have a bunch of those that are going to be in the bag. So those are, oh, I have to do my professional uh, hand thing up here. Am I doing it right? Cool. Great. So you get, it looks great. It looks totes great. Fresh. Cool, cool. I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> so you get stickers. You get a couple of Rem Alternus pins. So it's got our little dragony boy on there. It's a little hard to see because it's dark and like I can show you the reflection of my studio if you want, but that's really it. Um, then we've got Iron On Patch with our Rem Alternus dragon. So that's really awesome. So that can be added to your backpack or jacket or whatever cool shenanigans you want to add it to. Then we've also got a Rem Alternus poker chip. So it's got the Dragon Boyo on one side, and on the other side it has our Chicago Shadows uh, logo from our first Kickstarter and uh, Cyberpunk Fantasy film. And just to add in some extra stuff, because I have a lot of them, um, we are also going to add in Shadowrun, a couple of Shadowrun 6 dice. So these are our pink and cool. Why is my lighting really shitty right here? Uh, I'm going to have to adjust for that. There we go. It's in the light. So you get a nice Shadowrun logo on the six, and uh, I think the one is special, too. Yeah, the one is the the skull. Ooh. So there's uh, the Shadowrun dice and a Shadowrun 6th edition, 6th world edge token. So it's got the skull on one side and the Shadowrun logo on the other. So this is an edge token or poker chip for those that don't play the shadow run but still want cool pink chips that have fun stuff on them i'm trying to get my camera to refocus there we go so hashtag yay gay to enter go ahead and fill that out we're going to call that out a few times during the stream tonight you do have to be present to win so make sure you stay um on the stream we are going to announce it right after the credits so that we can total everything and and do it so stay tuned all the way through Whew. does anybody else have anything to announce Nope. What about I, I've heard something about this baby face. Can we can, can oh, baby face? I do have an announcement. <laughs> I I have drawn baby face based on the description uh, written by the chat in episode one. Please shield your eyes if you cannot handle ethereal beings at this time. Uh yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so excited. Alright, so uh, I wrote down in my notes the description of Babyface is eight arms, pull arms to fight with, green skin, fiery hair, eight feet tall, with a baby head, uh, shark fins for legs, and then it actually got put that he walks on his hands, uh, and that he only eats broccoli and is mad about it. So... Here's baby face. Baby face's ah, baby face oh, is amazing. A, is amazing. <laughs> Truly but a terror. Really, he would walk like this. That is literally out of my nightmares. <laughs> and then he would flip up to attack you with his pull arms. So. So, for anyone new to the stream, this is just episode two, and I made the tragic mistake last week of saying that. <laughs> The fighter that the chat gets to control and, and help hit, like, you guys describe him because I couldn't think of something off the top of my head. And this is what you gave us, guys. This, this is your fault. monstrosity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, is this is baby face. Yes. Um, <laughs> by the way, I, you know, just to say something. So, one of Rem's goals is to open an online store and have, like, a t-shirt graphic for each uh, season of the episodicals that we have. And I'm pretty sure Babyface is going to be Episodicals uh, 3, so... Yes, I need a face mask with Babyface on it. <laughs> if someone breaks into your house in the middle of the night and they see your your uh, face, uh, your, your sleep mask with Babyface, and they're like, nope, nope, I'm <laughs> <Not> gone. <today. laughs> awesome. All right, well, with that, dear party members, we are going to get back into our game. So, who can recap for me what happened last week? So, we all got to this end separately, and then we, Forge and Morphe, were chatting up this little half-elf who was just going on and on and on and on and on. Halfling. And then, halfling. And then, 
Um, I know Colin's character just did not want anything to do with the battle that was pounding at the door that had the villagers in Rise, and he was like, no, I'm just going to mind my own business. And then poor Lyron <laughs> is out. I think they're outside the tavern with all these oncoming, oncoming like, undead army completely solo. Like, just 2021 level, just taking on the whole horde by themselves. And that's where we left off, I think. Excellent. Uh, so... I believe last session, uh, the last person... I'm bringing up my uh, combat tracker again here. Um, last person to go was a Zombo that just moved uh, generically in uh, in Lyron's direction. Um, so we are almost at the bottom of the order. And I believe uh, Morpheus was supposed to be next. But right before Morpheus could act... Pause for dramatic effect. What happened to me? <laughs> Nothing happened to you. Yeah. However, we're fine. The oh. goofball that decided to take on uh, the army of the undead has another uh, little shock coming. Oop! I don't know why I made it that big. Cool. There we go. Uh, coming their way. So, <laughs> Lyron. Let me open my bad boy sheet here. Uh, yeah, let's let's go for some some life drain. That sounds good. Um, does a uh, sixteen hit you? Uh, yes. <laughs> Please take twenty five necrotic damage. Oof. And I also need you to take to make a con saving throw. Okay. Eh? A 12. Please lower your maximum hit points by 25 as well. <sighs> okay. What are you at? <laughs> 23. Okay. All right. Um, that so, happened last week too. Yep, that that surely did. Morpheus, it is your turn. Okay, had to get my own map up. Uh oh, I can't I can't touch any of the screens or else it's just chaos ensues. Okay, so let's see. Where is the this little spot back here? Is like a trap door outside or through a pantry or something to the horde? Where are you uh, pointing? Oh, yeah, you can't see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> click and hold for the ping. Oh, no. Are you pinging? Hang on. Sorry, I zoomed in because I was doing push talk at the same time. So I'm by Oops. the tavern stairs near the stage-ish. I have my little okay. icon there. I see you. So how? So each of these squares is what five, five feet? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And these little white doors back here, where we have the the pirate looking dude, and it looks like he's from the Earth Kingdom hanging out there. Is that <laughs> a door outside that I can uh, get through? Yeah, so up toward the top here, you've got the the zombies head uh, in this little foyer area. The zombies had taken the first set of do double doors down, uh, and they were banging on this second door, but uh, the... Um, I don't know why they made the token look like a pirate dude, because it's like this pretty half-elf woman that they, like, <laughs> describe in the... I don't know. Uh, but whatevs. Uh, and then the bartender, they're both going there and barricading the door. Um, they sent out the um, the smith uh, down this hall up here and into the stables area where uh, the zombies initially had been going to knock down that door too until they realized that there was some yummy, yummy Lyron to be had. Um, so, yeah, so nothing is blocking this door right now. Um, and you don't know what's going on over here, but you can... 
they're they're barricading this shut. So did I have any notion or? Uh, maybe I looked out a window or something and saw that Lyron had rushed out there. Were they already in the tavern when they rushed out? Or did they even make it in? They didn't even make it in. They were coming up the road. Uh, now, what you... Uh, roll a perception. Okay. Mm, actually, don't. Because from here, you wouldn't be able to see. Uh, you would have to move up to the door to see, so... Okay, then uh, I am going to... Uh-uh-uh. I'm going to move my... Is there a window around here near these doors I can peek out of at the horde? Um, these little slits are the windows, so from here, no. Dang, I'm trying to see if I can save poor Lyron, but I don't technically know that you're there at all. Okay, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my character up to the door. I'm going to help um, the... the people who work there the staff kind of barricade it i don't know what's going on but i know it doesn't sound good and it definitely doesn't smell good so i'm gonna see what i can do i don't have any like vines or anything like that but i can at least get there and i can prepare to hit in case someone comes through cool so go ahead and move yourself up your movement speed okay, where uh, you want to be 15 20 all right so that's 20 feet Okay, um, so from here, since you guys are all kind of fidgeting toward the door, I'll let you make a perception if you'd like to. Um, yeah, as you're rushing over there and you're, you're going to help them and you're kind of offering whatever hands, like they're lowering a, a bar over it and you kind of help see it uh, the rest of the way through. You see a small window with a couple of, um, of wooden bars um, kind of in, in the top of the frame of the door. And as you're, uh, you're helping them and you, you see this flicker of movement and you're like, where are the, the zombies going? And you see a person in the distance. And it's almost like Harry Potter with with the the uh, Dementors, like where you f see like some oh, of their no. the blurring kind of leaving them. Uh, so you see this uh, this. You want to describe yourself, Lyron? Okay, so um, I mean, from there it's dark. So I guess all you'd really see is like a hooded figure getting their, for lack of a better expression, shit rocked. Uh, by a bunch of undead. <laughs> How close is Lyron to the door? Are, is it? Are they behind the horde or in front of it near the tavern? Uh, so Lyron, he is um, about eighty feet away from those doors. Um, is what we had said last time, and the zombies are are inching closer, but they're really uh, shambly. Um, with the twenty-one, I'll say that there's like a dark shadow that you can see. Uh, but you can't make out what it is from here. But it, but there's actually two dark shadows, and they're, like, swirling around uh, Lyron. Okay, so what Morpheus is going to do is she's going to bar all of her weight against the door because she knows she's not going to be able to make it out there, at least not on this turn. And she's going to turn back and look at Whisker Forge and the halfling elf and be like, there's still someone out there. I don't know if we can save them, but they're, they're surrounded by zombies or whatever the heck these smelly things are, and I don't know what we can do. And then that will be the end of my turn because I used all my movement. Cool. Okay. Next up is Lyron. Oh, okay. So, uh, at this point, I'm sort of realizing that I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Um, and... Trying to think... If Lyron can hold on for one more round, I may be able to get a ranged healing spell out there. Yeah. Honestly, I have healing spirit, so I might... Well, no, because my... It doesn't matter, because my hit points have been permanently reduced, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so there's nothing to heal. Yeah. Um... um yeah, 
So, um, you do have, if it helps at all, uh, you have inspiration and a successful hit from the chat. I did see that. Um, and I'm thinking this is probably going to be the turn to use it. Uh, so... Then again, like my speed. Oh, yeah, because I have Dread Ambusher and Polar Master. Because they both entered my reach, I can actually attack one of them three times. Ooh! So I'm going to do that. Cool. And one of them's a guaranteed hit, so I will roll two more. Cool. And we'll see how it goes. Thank you, chat. We love you. Yeah. Thank you for rescuing me, chat. <laughs> um, all right. So quarter staff. Nineteen's gonna hit. And a fourteen, let me double check. Um is fourteen hits. So go ahead and roll your, um, yep, so uh, roll four damages total because you get double for your nat 20. Or no, it was just an auto hit, wasn't it? It wasn't a crit. So just three times then. Don't forget you're on push to talk, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the worst. Well, and it's like, it even lights up at me to be like, hey, you're muted. Did you know you're muted? And um, I still forget. So we will roll three times. That's a lot of rolls. All right, so what's going on here? Um, oh, it's whether I'm using it one-handed or two-handed. Okay. But I don't... So. Okay, because it's a six and a... Okay. Now I understand. I mean, I, I would be... Um, just the stuff on the left. Okay. So... Uh, the two-handed... So stuff on the left, it looks like one-handed, and stuff on oh. the right is two-handed? You are correct. I just completely misread those backwards. But I would probably be doing it two-handed, two -handed, unfortunately. Yeah. So it'd be a ten and two fours. So a ten and two fours. All right, so that is 18 damage. Okay, um, so as you connect, and you know you connect, uh, and you feel like a resistance as the, the quarterstaff moves through it, um, but it doesn't, like, bang against it like you expect a quarterstaff to. Right. But it still seems to, like, connect and react to it, but not in the way you, you would have expected fully. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. So I think that's where I'm where I'm at with that. Okay. Uh, any movement or no? Because of attack of uh, opportunity. I guess I'm. Oh no! Because attack of opportunity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Zombos. They move another. Let's see. They. I believe they had. 
They're slow as butts. So yeah, only 20 feet movement. Um, so they are inching their way along, but they're using their full action to do it. So they were 120 feet, so that's why they got to 80 last time. Um, or you had moved in. So that was 80, so that would be 40. So they are going to use their full movement to get to you, but they cannot attack uh, this turn. So I am I'll just going to... Yeah, right? <laughs> so we've got ghosty, ghosty, zombie... Actually, just those two make it. The other ones got started later. So, all right. Those two zombos are done. It is time for Ghosty Ghost. Here we go. Everyone hold, hold your breath. Does an eight hit? No, it does not. Okay. Um. Oh, wait, hold on. It's not it's really an eight, is it? <laughs> no, it's their first one that goes. It was a nat 20. Oh, oh no. Oh, so no. You take... 35 oh, no. damage and I need a con saving throw you do have inspiration I don't have that many hit points um, that's fine so you're going to go <laughs> down but we need to make sure that your, uh, your your hit point maximum doesn't go down you're fine save okay. that inspiration um, so as, as you connect you connect you connect kind of uh, the you see this uh, terrible face just filled with hatred and it kind of opens its mouth and, and uh, you, you see like remnants of, of where teeth would have been if it was solid but it's just like Ooh. gaps in the darkness and like these glowing hateful eyes and you feel it draw breath and that's the last thing you remember as you fall cool next I in guess. the order is Zarfu. Okay. Um, so did I... So when we were first approaching the building and Lyron and I were like coming from opposite directions, like did I see them? Um. Like do I know that they are out there? Make a past tense of uh, perception roll. So just roll straight perception for me. Okay. Not that you remember. Okay. Um, then did I hear Morpheus when Morpheus was talking about... Yeah, because like last, last time we played, you rolled really well for your perception. Um, and like you, you kind of snuck into the kitchen or, uh, uh to the, the dining room at, from the kitchen and you were like, what's going on? So you were paying attention to everything. So I'm going to say, yeah, you okay. heard. Okay. Really? Uh, I was thinking that maybe I go back out the kitchen and see what's going on outside. Okay. Uh, go ahead and use your movement. So how far can you go? Uh, 30 feet. 30? So, so like six squares. That's six squares. Go ahead and, and let's see where that gets you. Okay. Uh, so that gets you to the doorway. From there, I'll let you peek out um, if you want to do that. Um, or you can use your action. So you can either do your action to peek out, but you're not sure if you're going to see uh, anything or not from where you are. Or you can use your action to double your movement. So you're basically sprinting um, and you get 30 more feet. Okay. Um, so is Lyron already like... Well, I know that Zarfu doesn't know, but... I guess you're just going to have to wait in suspense. 
Where is Babyface when you um, need him? <laughs> uh, I will say, so I think Babyface's initiative last time was 17, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I will let Babyface make a, um attack after this. But I'm going to let Colin go first. Okay. Um, I feel like Zarfu would sprint. Okay. All uh, right, move another 30 feet. Okay. Well, I can't move outside. It won't let you? No. <gasps> How about now? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure. Um, from right. here, what you are um, a half orc, you have night vision? Uh, yes, I have dark vision. You have dark vision, okay. Yes. So, yeah. um, and how many feet of dark vision do you have? 60. 60? All yeah. right. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it's not enough for you to see uh, Lyron yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, so that is your turn. Uh, zombies, uh, another Zombo, so that's this one, is going to move closer, but still with 40 feet from starting behind, um, has one more turn to get to you. Uh, so that is, we're going to wait on. Um, all right, Whisker 4! Oh, wait, I said that, that, um, chat fighter baby face could make a hit. So, with his pole arms, eight yeah. pole arms. Does that mean eight attacks at once? No. <laughs> although I will say that Shay made this character, but I didn't get access to it before the stream, so I'm not using it for this stream. But maybe next week. Um, so I'm just going to do its normal attack here. Let's see what we got. Um, and what do you guys think? That should be on the, uh, Wraith, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. What's your preference? Wraith, Wraith, Wraith. Wraith. Definitely the Wraith. Okay, and it is a magic weapon, so it's not gonna be resistant, which is nice. Alright, it does 16 slashing damage to our Wraith Boyo. All right. And you see, like, uh, a gash kind of appear. Anyone who... So, I guess, really, Morpheus would be the only one that could see this. Um, a gash kind of appears, and, like, smoke kind of spills out of that gash. All right. So, now, Whisker Forge. What you doing, Whisker? Okay. So they barred the they barred this door, right? The the second door into the inn, correct? This one, yes. Yes. Okay. Um Do I think I can get out mm, I, I think I can get out of the stables. Um I am going to do feline agility. So instead of thirty feet I will move sixty feet. Damn. Uh, and go back to Okay, let's go. Five, six. I can't get out from here. How about now? Yes. So that's nine. And then, is this door open? Uh, so what you see is, as you enter uh, the stables is you see uh, a bar lowered, but the smith is kind of looking out the, uh, the windows at... Um, at what's going on and sees you coming uh, and kind of barreling and I'll go ahead and let them use like a reaction to to lift that for you so you can go. Okay. And then bye. I will go. I need to get out. Oh. I don't know why <laughs> it's doing that. I'm gonna have I'm locked to inside. Shay, I'm gonna need your help later. <laughs> oh, I will go there. Um okay. I guess that's your, in, that's your 60 I, feet? That is 60 feet. Um, what is there before I decide so, to dash? From here, you are... So it's 80 feet from these doors. So taking that in a circle, I'm going to say about 100 feet. 
um, from where Lyron has fallen. Okay. I will use my bonus action to dash 30 more feet. Okay. Um, you are able to catch up with uh, these zombos. So if you would like to stop at them. Are they right near me right now where I could attack them? Uh, no, you'd ha- you would catch up to them pretty much at the end of your next uh, 60 feet. Uh, oh, I only have 30 more feet. So I'll just oh, move the 30 up. Okay. Yep. I will move the 30 feet. Okay. And that is your turn. Uh, Zombo number two, or Zombo number four, really, at this point. Um, why can't you guys see this Zombo? I don't know why that did that. Okay. Um, so that's that Zombo's turn to move up. So he's going to reach um, Lyron at the next um, action. Uh, now, Ghosty number two, you kind of see it perk up and turn to look at you and it starts swooping your way um let's see use 30 feet so that means that it is 70 feet away so it will use its action to double its movement even though it doesn't need to use all of it but it wants to get to you so it cannot attack this turn but you have a new friend And that is its turn. Morphe. Okay, so I'm by the door now. I'm going to um, look through the window and see if I still see that person there. Did I see Lyron go down? Do I still see them on the ground? You saw Lyron go down. Okay, so it turns out because we started this adventure at level 7, I believe is what, what we gave with. I actually have a trait. Um... I'm sorry. I, I, give me one second because I have to react to sh- what Shay just said. Zombo number five, a little bit of Monica in my life. I'm yes. real mad at you right now. Yes, no, you. I'm not mad. Uh, I love it. <laughs> we're all pleased. Let yes. us take this opportunity to remind the chat that we are doing a giveaway so that I can get past my anger before uh, uh, Faye makes her move. Uh, so if you type in the chat, Yay. Hashtag yay gay. You get entered to win uh, a bunch of Rem Alternus swag, and including this nice uh, dragon patch with the Rem Alternus dragon on it. Uh, dragon so, boy. Yeah, dragon boy. That's uh, awesome. And a bunch more. So hashtag yay gay. You can also get bonus entries by donating bits or subscribing. Um, so please do that. You have to be present to win, so stay tuned to the end of the stream. We're going to do the drawing uh, during the credits and announce it right after. All right, I'm less angry now. So, Faye, go ahead. Okay, so um, because I saw Lyron go down, I am going to go over to the window, and I'm going to grab onto the window so I'm kind of stand up so I can peek and make just clear eyesight. And I am going to cast Bomb of the Summer Court, which I can do once every long rest. And this counts as a bonus action. It's the only action I'm going to do because I don't have anything else I can do. So at second level, you become imbued with the blessings of the summer court. You are a font of energy that offers respite from injuries. You have a pool of fate energy represented by a number of D6s equal to your druid level. As a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 120 feet of you and spend a number of those dice equal to half your druid level or less. Roll the spent dice and add them together. The target regains a number of hit points equal to that total. The target also gains one temporary hit point per dice spent. Nice. So, um, my understanding is because it's half my level, so that means I can only do three d6s at one time. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and roll that, so I have to figure out how to roll th- three d6s. So in roll 20, uh, if you in the upper left, if you hover over uh, the little dice icon... Um, You'll see the D6s, and then you click on the three that's to the right of the uh, D6. There it is. 10 uh, HP 
goes to Lyron, plus I believe you said it would be three temporary hit points. Yep, and so what happens is as she does this, she'll close her eyes and she'll kind of ground herself with her fingers gripping into this window sill as she's looking out at this battlefield. And with a deep breath, you see that her antlers start growing these bright red flowers as she's focusing. They just bloom all over. And then when she snaps her eyes open, they're glowing a greenish purple color and you sort of see like a wispy green air kind of blow out of her mouth, get caught up in the wind, and then it'll swirl around Lyron's body. That's cool as shit. <laughs> awesome. All right. And with that, Lyron opens his eyes. Her eyes. Her eyes. Her uh, eyes. Oh, geez. So, so that gives me three of my hit points temporarily back, right? Yeah, so you get three more um, uh, maximum hit points and three more hit points um, than the, the ten that she gave you. Okay. Temporarily. So... So, thirteen... So then she gave me thirteen, 13. and then I add three to my temp. Okay. Correct. So you have, like, half of your hit points back now. Yeah! Almost half of my hit points. Not <laughs> quite. Okay. Alright, so thank you. Uh, anything else uh -huh. you are doing with your... Do you have a bonus action or anything, Faye? So that one was technically my bonus action. Can I do another action since I didn't move? Yeah. Or is it just the bonus action? Okay. You get a bonus action and action and movement every turn. Okay, can I see... Are there any of the zombos in my line of sight from where I'm standing? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. One second while I switch over to my character sheet. So I'm going to focus on one of the zombos that's um, closest to the actual tavern itself, so one of the frontliners. And I'm going to cast Firebolt, which is a cantrip. It goes up to 120 feet as long as the target's within sight. Great. And that I have to... I have to roll to hit, right? Uh, yes, you like, do. Make sure it hits. Okay. Which one are you going for? Can you uh, ping them for me? Um, yeah, I have to figure out how to do the little colorful circle thing. Uh, you click and hold. Okay. Eh, eh. Yeah, okay, so you're attacking the one on the right. Got it. That's the one, all right. Sorry, I have to read the instructions. So I have to make a ranged spell attack against the target. So I just roll... Do I just roll a d20 to see if it hits, right? Uh, no, actually, if you go in D&D &D Beyond to your actions, um, and then to your... You should have one for spells uh, right below that, a tab for spells. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it should give you um, your, your plus for your roll, and you can click the button to roll right in there. There it is. All right, so you rolled a 12 to hit our uh, zombie, which, let me double check. Yep, zombies have zero freaking armor class, so I'm exaggerating, but uh, it hits. So you do 17 fire damage, nice. And then the way this firebolt is going is I'm gonna wave my greenish hand outside the window and it's just gonna hurl straight through my hand. It's gonna be in the shape of daggers. Because why not? Ooh. It's a fantasy world, and I can do that. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's write this story. That's awesome. Thank you, by the way, so much for the bits uh, and the subs and everything. We're seeing the stream boss go down. Only 3,450 uh, hit points left until um, we get another swing for our uh, baby face. Can't believe that's a thing. All right. <laughs> Okay, so that was phase turn. That was action, bonus action. Are you moving at all? No, I can't really move anywhere because I don't want to open the door. I want to kind of keep that barrier there. Sure. All right, so since we just reached the bottom of the order again, um, the... The, if you remember from last episode, uh, the bartender had shouted out some commands that there was a trunk under the stairs. So in the meantime, the uh, villagers and laborers and, and stuff that are in the room have been lining up to get uh, 
to see what's in this box. So there's crossbows and, and um, clubs and some like beaten up old swords and stuff like that that they've been pulling out of this uh, box. And uh, you see um, the, the chef who has completely discarded the nice uh, stew that they were bringing out to uh, Forge and um, Morphe uh, step up toward the front of the room um, and toward where uh, Whisker Forge dashed out to the stables and says, follow me, and takes off and expects people to follow him. So we'll see what happens there. Okay. Top of the order. So we're at a 17 again. Um, so before Forge goes, let's have another hit. This is the last hit from Babyface. Thank you, chat. I don't know why that keeps r rolling twice, but that's okay. Nat 20. I'm upset, but all right. Um, all right, so that is 19 damage. Okay. <laughs> all right, so again, another gash goes through uh, the chest, almost cuts this thing in half. Smoke is just pouring and billowing out from uh, and surrounding uh, baby face. Uh, oops. Go back to... Lyron, it is your turn. Oh, jeez. Um. Okay. I don't. Feel like I should run away, but I also feel like I still have not really anywhere to go. Especially because I know, like, if I get into the inn, then I'm making an inn for zombos and race inspectors and mysterious creatures all, to get in. So You're also prone, so it's going to take half oh, your movement just to get up. That's true. Okay. Lyron, you do have a nat 20, though, if you would like to use it. Yeah, I think I think that I am going to get up and <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to attempt a bonus attack. Sorry, my brain still hasn't, like, absorbed what Dread Ambusher actually is, because it's so many small things. So I keep, <laughs> so keep rereading it, because I'm like, wait, is there a thing? Um, totally good. Yeah, okay, so I can make two, well, I would normally be able to make two attacks, so if half of my attack is getting up, then the other half is one attack, right? Well, no, so your attacks uh, are actions. Your movement. So oh, every, okay. Yeah, every turn, everyone gets to do three things. You get uh, one bonus action, one action, and uh, and one full movement. Um, you might have class or race features that give you more of any of that, but you're always at a minimum going to have that. So if your movement is 30 feet, which I think yours is, um, being prone means you're using half of your movement to get up. So now you can only move 15, 15. feet, okay. but you still have your action. You still have uh, any of your actions and uh, bonus actions. Okay. I mean... I think I'm going to go for one of the zombies in between me and the door okay uh ping um, which one you're gonna go for i'm gonna go for this guy what wait 
I don't know why it doesn't want to pink. There we go. Okay, great. And, <laughs> and they are with you, so you're not turning, you're not leaving uh, for an attack of opportunity. So that's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm going to use my attack and my bonus attack. Um, so. All right. So that is. Uh, Roll, roll one more time. Uh, so a 13, I'm sorry. Uh, I see what it's doing now. Yeah. Sorry, it's weird that it, it gives us so many fields. Yeah, I think it's because it technically can be one-handed or two-handed. I see. Um, um, so a 13 does hit. Okay, so we're doing a total of... So I only rolled... So it should be one of those sevens for damage, and yes. then... Yeah, and then this seven. And then the extra, okay, seven. So you've done 14 z uh, damage to this Zombo, who falls over. So he, like, as you just swing, um, the first one cracks uh, through his ribs, and you bring that straight back around and take out his knees. Um, and you hear this sickening crunch, and it just hits, like, it, it hits the ground at the knee and then falls over. Okay, cool. All right. And I'll take it. Um, so now it is zombies, the two zombies in front of you's turn. So let's see here. So the one, this one's going to go, and it's real excited that it gets to bite you. Uh, as excited as zombies can be, which isn't very excited. So it just, like, as it's shambling, it just, like, falls into you and um, starts trying to take a bite here, so. And I never roll this well as a player, but it got a 20. But you only take three bludgeoning. So I did not roll as well on that. Now, as, uh, as the one drops and hits the ground... And the other one lunges at you and um, and goes to take a bite. Um, you kind of twist to turn your attention to the one that's attacking you as you hear this gurgle. And this zombo stands back up. And he's going to take an attack. That's not how that's supposed to go. <laughs> It's supposed to stay down. Uh, I rolled an 11. Does that hit? No. Okay, then you are good. So he's, <laughs> as he's trying to get up, he's like, ah, rah, rah, and just doesn't connect, but uh, he's a zombie. What can you expect? All right. So that is both the zombos' turns. But there's someone behind you that is really interested in the fact that you just got up. So... Yeah. It's not real happy about that. You can't keep a good person down in this D&D game. Literally down, prone. That's what I meant, in case you didn't get that. Um, so I rolled a uh, 20. So you're going to take 22 damage, which takes you down again. And I need a con Why? saving throw. <laughs> I think you... I'm gonna, use my, I'm gonna use my natural 20 on that con saving throw. Okay, that's, I wondered if you yeah. still had that. I do uh, still have that. Alright. Uh, so good. Uh, it doesn't take your hit point maximum down, so you're just unconscious for right now. You are... Uh, you aren't stable, you are bleeding out, but you have a chance. But like, if I get healed, it's not gonna be healed back to like 10 hit points, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um... Yeah. This, okay. This is going scary, guys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wasn't sure how we were gonna how well we would come back from that one. Although, like Morphe's magic healing it's helping, yeah, was, like pretty great. I'm All already right. less dead than I was. <laughs> Only mostly Stop. dead. Zarfu. It is your turn. Okay. Uh, 
So I'm just gonna keep going up. It's running towards the zombos. Okay, move uh, your 30 feet first. Let's see where that gets you. All right, uh, move you over here just so oh, you can sorry. see around the corner of that. That's fine. I'm gonna make uh, more of this visible too, just so we have you have room. Um, now, I'm just staring at Morphe through the window. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Morphe. Um, yeah. So what you can do, um, you are now. Let's see. Eighty. So you're still more than eighty feet away. Um, so you're not going to have the vision yet. Right. Uh, but you can hear the groans in the distance. Uh, you know you're heading the right way. So yeah, you can move, uh, you can use your action to keep running. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So move another 30. Whoa. Uh... That gets you there. Uh, I, I have actually two more squares. Okay. Um, so let's do just so I can see. Um, I'm gonna move you here for a second. So that's five, ten. Uh, fifth. I'll give you fifteen feet. So that you are now sixty-five feet away. Um, from Ly where Lyron is laying. So you're 60 feet from the zombies. So you can just make out the zombies in the darkness ahead. Oh, okay. Cool? Cool. But I'm going to put you there just so I don't get confused. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now it's this Zombo's turn and this Zombo's turn. So they are both still headed toward Lyron. Uh, they make it this turn but cannot attack. Whiskerforge! And actually, it was just one of them that moved, because the other has to wait for their turn after Whiskerforge. All right. So, there's a thing right next to me. And I am going to cast Moonbeam on it. Okay. Um, so, I take... Just reach into my pouch, grab a bunch of seeds of a um, moon seed print and an opalescent feldspar, and I blow it in its face, and it needs to make a constitution and check. Ooh. And Dewsville. 18. 18, that makes it, so it'll take half of that. So it'll take three. Three but... <laughs> <laughs> I was not ready for that at all. <laughs> when a creature enters the spell area for the first time, which is this, um, on a turn or starts its turn there, it is engulfed. Um, engulfed in frames, claws, and searing play, and blah, blah, blah. And let's make a constitution saving throw. So I will have to do that again when it's its turn. On its turn. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool beans. All right, are you doing it? Was that an action, bonus action? That is an action, so I can't actually attack it with my hammer, but I uh, also you... can't reach because it's a concentration spell. And I don't want to move, so. Do you have any bonus actions? Mm, not right now. Okay. All right, this Zombo steps up. It is Wraithy Boy's turn, who is hanging out with Forge. So uh, it's going to make its con saving throw. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't rolled like below an 18 in a while. <laughs> um, all right. Well, it makes that so it only takes half damage. Is that right? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, yeah sorry. So do you roll that damage again or do I? Yeah. Is it half this up? Okay. yeah. Let me find it. I don't know. Doesn't need a button to roll it on there. Hmm. Ah, no, that's not what I wanted. Was it what I wanted? It looks like the 10 radiant damage went through, so. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so it's going to take another five. It screams, uh, and and like it's it's glowing evil eyes just like turn to slits as it blocks itself from the radiant light. Um, And as it, like, recoils from this, it uh, rises again and just screams at you. And we're going to take a break. So right before we take this break, remember, type hashtag yay gay in the chat to enter to win our Rem Alternus swag bag. At the end of the stream, must be present to win. We'll do the drawing during the credits, announce right after the credits. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you so much. All right. I love how that's the symbol that we're live now is, is <laughs> I'm a tease Faye. It's like milking the cow. Well, we are back and I believe forge was about to get fucked up by a wraith. So let's, uh, let's, let's get back to that. Uh, don't forget chat. Um, if you are just joining us, hashtag yay gay gets you entered to win a bunch of Rem Alternus swag, lots of goodies, and and cool stuff, and it'll be in a little dice bag, too, so lots of great stuff, so please enter to win. Must be present to win, um, but we will be uh, drawing during the credits, and then uh, let you know and communicate you, send you a message in Twitch right after, so um, cool. Let's get back to it. Ooh, what am I going to do to Tony? Well, <laughs> life drain, of course. Uh, does it, a 13 hit you? What was that number? 13? It does not. I'm sorry, I couldn't roll that for you, Lyron. <laughs> like, this is this is just unfair. I feel personally <laughs> my point. Apparently, I needed to get up for break, and now my rolls are going to go down. <laughs> Um, I was all ready to roll my constitution save, too, so... Well, no need. <clears throat> so, okay. Oh, why didn't the health take? Okay, so you should be at... Okay, there you go. All right, so next in the order is Morphe. Oh. Okay, so what what are we going to do to try to save Lyra on this time from Sarah's Wrath? I'm not angry. <laughs> Alright, how how big is this window that I'm standing in front of? It's like little... Like those little windows with the little bars on them that like... I don't know, cafeteria size. <laughs> how big are the bars? Like, are we talking rat could fit through it, or... I mean, a rat can fit through anything. Okay. Let's see if I can... This might be a horrible, horrible idea, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Randy's calling for it in chat. Alright, so I... And the Whisker Forge went in the opposite direction, right? They went back towards the stables and out. What was that? Say that again. Did Whisker Forge, did they go in the opposite direction of where I'm staring? Like, it looks like they were going towards the stables to get out. Yeah, he headed down that hallway right here uh, into the stables and out those doors. All right. If we go diagonal, does that count as 10 feet or still 5 feet? Like, the square oh. that's still touching your little corner. If you do the, uh, it actually doesn't matter if you do the little, um circle with a ruler to see what's 30 feet in a circle around you. It'll tell you where you can go. Oh, so I just hold it over my thing and that goes out so, 30 feet. Uh, no, what you no. Uh, if you on the, the upper left toolbar, you'll see a circle that looks like it has like a ruler or something okay. at like two o'clock. Uh, so if you click on that and then click on your character and drag, um, you'll see like the range you can get to what's oh. 30 feet direction. Okay. All right, so that's my movement. I'm going to go uh the the zombos haven't really approached the the doors that we're barring yet. It looks like so 
I am going to see the tail of Whisker Forge kind of skirt around the edge. And then concerned for my friend, because let's be honest, I don't actually know these people. But I do know Whisker Forge, so I'm going to dart after them um, up to my 25 foot, which is as far as I can go. And then I click off this, I believe. Yeah, okay, go back to the, the arrow, um, and then you can move again. I have so much tech savvy, guys, you don't even know. Oh, I have to actually, like, follow the borders of the map. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, from here, uh, these little bars are windows, so I can't see anything outside, right? Like, uh, no, there's there's no windows where you are right now. And is this... is This, um, this is just a door here. Who Who is this person? That's the cook. Oh, okay. What, what's the cook got going? Or, I'm sorry. The cook and the smith, actually. Does it look like they're about to... Are they barring the doors that they're standing in front of? Or are they about to burst out? Are they just preparing? Uh, you actually see that there is a, a, a bar for it, but it's up and the door is uh, open and they're kind of like looking out right now. Um, the um, smith uh, is, is looking out. The cook looks like he's preparing to... Um, head to, I don't know where my token went for the, the smith, so I'm gonna have to find that, but um, it is preparing for, like, to lead a horde of people out into the night. Okay, so if that's the case, especially that's the way Whisker Forge went, I'm gonna, once it's my next turn, I'll probably join into the fray, so if they leave, I'll go with them. But for okay. now, I can't see anything, so I can't do anything. Well, you can move another 25 feet. Oh, okay. Like, is a bonus action I can move? It's an, you can works. use your action to double your movement. Um, oh. So it's like, normally you would run and do something at the same time, uh, but now you're just like focused on running, but you can't do anything else because you're sprinting. Hmm. Is this going to be a terrible idea if I go right in front of Wraithy Boy here? Um, Wraithy Boy is still a ways out because... Um, Forge was able to get... Well, actually, we said that was as far as you went. So, um, yeah. I mean, you would be getting close to Wraithy. Alright. Uh -uh -uh. This is difficult. I don't know how this is going to play out. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm just going to... I'm going to go for it. I'm going to dash directly after Whisker Forge and see if I can catch them um, quite literally on their tail. So, I'm going to do... I'm going to do my best to sprint past Wraithy Boy, maybe a little bit too quick for him to notice as much as possible, and get on the other side of Whisker Forge kind of behind him. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is select the arrow in the upper left corner again so that you can move. Um, so 5, 10, 15 will get you to the doorway. And then I will take you outside. <laughs> okay. uh, 20 and then 25 would be your... All right. The rest of your movement. This is, cool. This is where I'm standing my ground until All right. I get killed. Cool. So that's the end of the order again. So now the townsfolk um, all have gathered their weapons and they are going to start lining up to head out the doors. Oh, don't want to forget you guys. Cool. Oh, were you my smith? I don't know. You might have been my smith. You're over there. Okay. So, that is their turn. Top of the order. We have no more uh, turns for um, Babyface. So, we go straight to Lyron. Cool. Would you please make me a death saving throw? Sure. You have a save. Woohoo! That's pretty rad. I'll take it. I'm just gonna, like, hang out on the ground for now. Cool. In my, in my dead state. 
Sleep it um, off. Sleep it yeah, off. Yeah, sleep it off. I mean, like, nothing's happened to my armor. So, like, the and last time the zombies tried to bite me, it didn't get through it. So I'll just, I'll just be here. I just pictured that video of that little girl laying down on the beach. She's like, I'm gonna take a nap. I'm, I'm gonna take, take a, a nap, nap right, right here. here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a perpetual mood, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same. Definitely. All right, I'm getting organized. Sorry, guys. Uh, load. Load. You don't want to load? Okay, cool. Good talk. All right, cool. That's glitching out. So I'll just roll. Okay. Um, I need a constitution saving throw from Lyran. Nicely done. Not a gnat, but I'll take it. Yep. Um, okay. All right. Um, Lyron, please mark your sheet with two failed death saves. Oh, but I didn't fail them. <laughs> rip okay so forge zarfu and morphe here's what you see in the distance now so you've seen these shambling zombies moving toward uh this figure that's fallen to the ground gotten up and fallen again uh you see uh one of the shadows still swirling around um and as this figure falls again you see the zombies just kind of uh, fall onto it, raking um, into it, and you see the shadow descend and swoop around it again. Uh, that is all you can tell for right now. That really doesn't sound good. Oh, that sounds like not a great time. <laughs> all right. Uh, Zarfu. You okay. are 60 feet away from the closest zombie. Okay. So, um, I guess I do have a question. Yeah. Um, okay, so I do actually have a short bow. Cool. Uh, with a range of 80. Do it. Um, however, I also have a sneak attack. Um, but I don't... Is there anywhere where I am now where I could hide? Um, if you move... <laughs> make a... Roll a d20. High or low? Me pick? Yeah. Uh... Low. Okay, roll a d20. Wait, how, oh, here we go. I was like, how do I roll a normal dice? Um, you do it in roll 20. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little uh, ribbon, uh, vertical ribbon, and one of them looks like a d20, and then you click, D yeah, you got it. It was oh, high. There, uh, there is nowhere uh. forward that is a place to hide along the road. Um, like all the, the trees and shrubs seem to be pushed back uh, from the roads a ways. But uh, you are 15 feet forward from the door here, so you could retreat 15 feet and hide behind this this uh, corner or hide within here um, and and then try it then. You're right at the at the range of that 80 feet, but you could do it. Okay. Uh, 
Is that what you'd like to do? Um, yes, I think I will do that. Okay. So go ahead and first make a, um, make a sneak roll for me. You're hiding from dumbass zombies. I think you're going to be fine, but. So on D&D Beyond, you have your skills uh, in the really long vertical column. Yeah. And, and stealth. It's not sneak, it's stealth. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nothing's going to see you, Mr. 27. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. So go ahead and roll your attack with your short bow. And which uh, zombie? Can you click and uh, hold over which zombie you want to attack? Um... Let's go with that one. All right, do it. All right, so, um, so the door here are those locked? So these doors are not. Okay. Uh, these are the ones that the zombies broke down. It's the it's this one that is being barricaded right now. Okay, so I guess while they're like looking at Lyron dying and not dying all the time. I'm going to like sneak around really fast and like hide behind the corner. And then I'm just going to look out first Zombo I see. I'm going to shoot with my arrow. I'm going to be right. like, because oh. I know, I don't know what they're attacking, but I know that I don't like them. Cool. Roll your attack roll. Hopefully after that great description, you don't miss. I sh Oh, a 12 hits. Okay. All right. So uh, you do four piercing damage and nine sneak attacks. So that's 13 damage on that Zombo. It falls to the ground. Yes. <laughs> you you whisper that to yourself, uh, Zarfu. But actually, I haven't spoken to Zarfu yet, but Zarfu is British. So he would be like, yes. <laughs> Replace that you in there. It's, it's yep. fine. It's a little fine. bit, yeah. Um. So the you hear a voice from inside. What? What'd you say? <laughs> uh, all right. So you that was your action um, and your bonus action to hide. So that is all of your stuff. You do still have fifteen feet of movement if you want to move back out in the open. Up to you. Uh. No, I think I'll I'll just stay here for now. Okay, sounds good. I like good. my spot. All right, next Zombo. All right, so um, you see these two zombos that were up here that got here late. Um, they're the one. They they've now kind of shambled up to the fray and have collapsed on top of uh, Lyron as well. Forge. Okay. Um, so I, I'm I'm gonna nod to the wraith. You're not <laughs> I, and I'm going to disengage <laughs> oh. and move 60 feet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So bonus action to disengage uh, using your ability to run like hell. Yeah. Oh, oh, then I would move 90 feet. Can I get up there then? Uh, you are... From where you are now, you're 125 feet from Lyron's uh, body. Okay, so I won't get up there this round, but I'm going to be just yelling at the zombos and trying to get their attention. Cool. Okay. So. All right. Nice. Nice round. Um, so as you do that... Uh, this Zombo, where is it? Come on, come here, Zombo. Which one are you? I think you're that Zombo. 
uh, there's like this it had been like bearing down on Lyron and then kind of like straightens and slow turns and like its white eyes turn to you they're real dumb real dumb um, so he is gonna shamble 40 feet into your direction you moved 90 feet so it makes it to you but it uses its full action to do that to get to you so no attackies Um, I have a, a philosophical, life motivational question for Forge and Morphe. Oh, I'm intrigued. First, what are your alignments? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, I'm good here. If you're in D and D Beyond, it's under your description. Oh, got it. Uh, my alignment is neutral good. Neutral good versus chaotic good. The wraith um, watches uh, you nod uh, and bail, and. By the way, I'm real dumb as shit, so I forgot that Moonbeam was on him, or I would have moved him. So, too bad. He's going to take some damage, so I'll roll that con saving throw first. Damn it. <laughs> 14? It does beat a 13. Okay. So that'll be 5. <laughs> okay. I'm mad at me. So, he uh, is going to look at you leave, but it's almost like his body starts to get pulled, um, and he turns and looks at, uh, Morphe and just hisses this, uh, like, this evil grin spreads on his face, and he's just delighted to attack you, and steps out of the moonbeam. She 100% hisses right back, by the way. She just goes, <laughs> She's been traveling with the tabaxi, like, of course she hisses back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, does an 18 hit you? Uh, Let's see, my armor class is only 10, so that would be a yes. Ooh! <laughs> Ouch! Okay, I need a con saving throw, please. Don't forget your natural 20. Oh, that's <gasps> right. Uh, okay, first let me roll this, because my con is also <laughs> plus zero. <gasps> you rolled a nat 20. Oh, yes! Alright, so take your uh, 22 necrotic damage, please. <laughs> <laughs> but you do not lose your max hit points. Ugh. All right. All right you just you just wait, Wraithy boy. You just wait. Uh, so it takes that is its turn. So its hiss was more terrifying than yours. Sorry, your hiss didn't do damage. <laughs> but it is your turn. All right, so... You want to show him a real hiss? <laughs> so what I'm going to do... So this this damage hits me, and she stumbles back, but she braces herself, and she's just going to, like, kind of lean forward and just get this, like, animal-sounding... <laughs> like, right back at him with her nails sharpened, and then she's going to step back, and she's going to snap her fingers, and she's going to use her first-level spell to become invisible. And... Yeah. So I'm going to be invisible. I disappear from his sight and I'm invisible until I cast a spell. And then she's also flipping him off while she's invisible, but he can't see. Uh, okay. Sassy. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. Nice. And then I guess since that was my action, I still have movement and he can't see me. So that, would he get advantage if I ran? Um... I think with uh, invisibility, he like there's no perception or anything, and he doesn't have a skill that lets him see through invisibility. And her con um, check was a natural twenty. Yeah. 
I mean, fair. So, no, he cannot see you. All right, then. Rindo would with, point out that he would have disadvantage. So, when she snaps, she kind of, like, phases between the two, the fey world and the real world. It's sort of like a ripple effect, and then she's gone. And she's actually going to join um, Whisker Forge as she heads towards the other zombos going as far as she can go. So, that brings the 25 feet. Right Just here. put yourself halfway because she, uh, Whisker Forge is able to run like 90 feet and you okay. can move 25. So. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here? Yep, that works for now. Okay. Um, so the Wraith is like confused and like looking all around it. Uh, meanwhile, we are at the bottom of the order. So out comes a pouring of lots of people with weapons. Uh, you know what? Two of them are chicken shit and staying inside just for... Because that, that would happen. <laughs> uh, cool. You guys have some backup anyway. Top of the order. All right. So what you guys see now. So Forge, as you are racing... Um, to make it to uh, Forge, you see that the, the zombies are tearing at at, um, at like clothes and flesh. You see blood starting to spatter, um, and do you want me to make? I want you to make a death saving throw. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. Okay. Does Christine and also have a nat 20 that someone gave her, Sarah? Didn't I use... Oh, crap. Yeah, I do. But I, it, I 13 forgot. is still above it, above the, the death save. It, you okay, have to cool. make a 10. So, um, no action this turn. Uh, cool. Zombie. Uh... Tch -tch -tch. So, the one that uh, Zarfu shot, it, like, took the arrow that took it directly to the ground, and it looked like it wasn't moving anymore, and then all of a sudden you hear that same suck of air. And it starts to rise as it chokes on its own spit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it kind of slowly turns to try to spot what shot it, and can't, but it's going to spend its turn doing that. Um, next Zombo heard Forge, um, and is going to slowly rise with, like, a strip, uh, of, of meat from its mouth, and it turns and looks at you, and, it, yeah, it's going to head your direction, and so is this one. Um, as you look past them as they are shambling toward you, uh, Forge, you do not see any movement coming from uh, the the collapsed heap. The Wraith. Give me one moment. All right. Um, so Forge as and Zarfu as you are watching this, and, and Morphe, even as you're you're trying to run in um, in Forge's direction, you see that that heat that wasn't moving all of a sudden seems to like take this big inhale, but instead of like settling back, it keeps rising, and you see this misty form of a tiefling, and that is the race turn. Zarfu. Okay, so this zombie got back up. Yeah, he's back up. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, this is something I don't know like about the game. Like, if I were to make it to uh, Lyron, 
Was there anything I would be able to do to help them? Um, hang on one sec. Hey, Faye, you're searching and it's showing up in the max bo the map box. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> How do I deal with zombies? <laughs> And you're muted, so we can't hear you apologize. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that Colin. Was beautiful. But, oh, that was I, like, switched over to Twitch. I need to know the answer. I need to know the answer. It's too late. I already changed screens. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. I really love this. Um, what, Colin? I was distracted. Um... <laughs> Um, okay, if I, like, so I guess this is, like, something I don't know, game rules, but, like, if I were to make it over to Lyron, uh, like, as just a, like, rogue, is there something that I could do to help them? Uh, you can do or a no. medicine check, um, uh, and that way you'd kind of, you would spend your action on a medicine check to, like, assess, um, how bad they look and what you could do to fix it. Um, and maybe, okay. like, stabilize them uh, if you roll well enough for it. If you roll a nat one, you could hurt them more. <laughs> oh, no. Um, oh, um, and the chat reminds you, you do have a nat 20. I do have a nat 20. Yes. Thanks, Bree. Because I feel like Zarfu would see that Zombo get back up and he would be like, oh, well, I'm not going to waste another arrow. Like, Well, keep, keep in mind, too, that um, Zombo is... Uh, 80 feet from you now and you your movement is 30 feet which means even if you sprint you can only get 60 feet so you still won't be oh. able to get up to melee range okay that's fair I mean you can, you can do that you can spend your turn moving to get closer and then you could fight them next turn right I think I would like to move forward, uh, like towards that Zombo and Lyron, um, but I would also still like to be hiding. So, is there a way I could see? There's nothing over there. Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing from your last roll. There's nothing between you and them um, okay. to 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 do that. Um, okay. One thing that you should know, though, is so there's that zombie by Lyron. And the, the wraith that's still over there, but over by Whisker Forge, because you've seen the zombies kind of shamble off in that direction. So I'd say you could see that from okay. uh, from there. Um, so you see the zombies are headed a different direction. And so those ones might be close enough for you to get to with your... Um, you'd still have to use your action as movement this turn, but you'd be in melee range of them for next turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, head over there? Yeah. All right, I'm going to put you outside just so we can see where sh stuff is. Um, but on your next turn, you'll get to them. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, Zombo number one over here is going to make an attack on, um, Forge. Does an 18 hit? An 18 does hit. Take your two goddamn bludgeoning damage. Nothing. Dumb. Um, Alright, so that's its turn. It's pretty satisfied with chomping on your arm. Uh, you're like, ow! That's mostly armor, but ow! Alright. Forge, it is your turn. <laughs> All right, I... Um, um, the original goal is still to get through there. Do I notice that Morphe's behind me is the biggest thing? Uh, make a perception. Hey. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's hard to miss. She's not quiet. <laughs> um then seeing that she's chased me instead of like I don't know what else she would have done. Um I'm probably going to attack Okay. This guy. 
Which one? Okay, that one. Got it. Um, with with the um. With my warhammer, and I'm going to use it with two hands. So. Okay. Thank you for specifying. Yes. Uh, an eleven on Zombo does hit. Perfect. And then four seven. <laughs> That's sad. That is sad. <laughs> that is really sad. Um, no. uh, you smack him with it, and uh, he ju- you just hear the crunching as he turns his head back to you. Mm-hmm. So um, I think... Yeah, that was my action, so never mind. I'm good. Okay. Zombie. This is the one that you just hit, so it like cracks its head, and like as you're like, ooh, it takes the opportunity to lunge at you um, in a slow way. <laughs> uh, six misses, I assume. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, it didn't anticipate your ugh and <laughs> missed. <laughs> um, all right, so. Wraith was real disappointed that its tasty, yummy, good meal was uh, disappeared, but it's got a whole feast to take of people now. Um, so let's let's make a roll for Wraithy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's nice. Um, <laughs> all right, so none of you are watching, but. Uh, the Wraith uh, s- turns from scrambling to look for uh, uh, Morphe and then s- sees this like crowd of people come out like ready to fight and just <gasps> draws in and the first one to reach him falls to the ground. Morphe. Okay. Um... I'm going to. Should I stand this part? What is uh? What does our our tiefling look like currently? Um. So there's still a, a unmoving form on the ground, but it seems to be like a, a translucent. Uh, or a transparent um, image of that tiefling has risen, uh, but hasn't done anything yet. Does it look like the mistiness is struggling? Like there's some sort of power struggle going on from my point of view? Uh, make an insight check. Alice. And I have a little A by it, so we'll... I think roll 20 will include that. Okay. So advantage, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Nope. Uh, you don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> no, no idea. Um, I'm going to use my nat 20 because I have it and I don't want to forget about it. Um, I'll allow it, but usually I want you to call it first. Oh, got it. Okay. So, um, so the nat 20. Um, so at first, as you look at this, you're like, what is happening? And then you're like, she's dead. Okay. This is, this is her, her ghost or, or with a nap 20, um, make a arcana check. Okay. Um, this is a specter. The wraith has raised a specter. All right. So... Seeing that and knowing that to myself, I'm probably going to cross Lyron off as a lost cause from my point of view. If it's too late and the specter's already sort of misting, yeeting its way out of the body. So instead, I'm going to focus my attention on the zombos that are going towards Whisker Forge. I need to make sure I'm on my own little screen here. So I don't move it around for everyone else. I'm going to cast... What do I have? That's useful... Because I don't want to do Moonbeam, because I'm pretty sure Whisker Forge would be caught in that. 
since it's a radius spell. It's a five foot radius spell. So five foot radius, you actually have 10 feet of space. So technically the wraith would have moved out, uh, still been in it with the five feet I moved. So just mm. we'll remember that for. Right, it, it was um, more towards space and just who was considering it. Okay. Didn't worry about hitting me. Fair. All right. So I'm gonna go with Moonbeam on this zombo. I have to click on it first. I got this stuff under control. This one, this Good. boy. Okay, the one in the middle. Yeah. And then I just do this cat. All right, so I need to make a con save. Uh, so it's gonna take half that damage, so it's gonna take two damage. Okay, and is Moonbeam an action or a bonus action? Um, it's an action, so it costs okay. a spell slot. And you are no longer invisible, because you- That's correct. Did a thing, okay. So can I Our describe the spell? I'm feeling very creative Absolutely. today. So Absolutely. As she's still invisible, she will kind of, as she takes a step closer to Whisker Force, she's going to appear just a few feet behind her and sort of phase back into the physical realm. And this giant celestial silver globe is going to hover above her. It looks like a full moon, a bright-ass full moon. And it's going to just cast this um, vibrant purple lavender beam down on her and then she's going to direct that with her hands to kind of throw it like she's throwing a ball so the moon gets thrown over top of Zombo and then that beam transfers over top of him and it's just raining down on him nice you you hear uh, the sizzle of dead flesh uh, burning in the light oh I smell it too yeah yeah it's real gross with that wonderful description, everybody, we are going to wrap for tonight. That is the end of the order. We're going to see start next week seeing how an angry mob can uh, face a wraith. Uh, we'll find out what happens. Um, but before we go, don't forget this is your last chance to enter in the chat. Uh, hashtag yay gay. And you get entered to win all of our awesome Rem Alternus swag that we will ship to you. Um, we have lots of stuff over here. And uh, so one uh, entry is for the hashtag Yege. Um, any bits that are donated uh, between now and the time the credits are finished um, will get counted. And that's uh, 100 bits equals one entry. Um, you can do multiples of that. Uh, or a subscription is worth seven entries. So a sub is usually $5. So you get two extra entries for free. Um, you have to be present to win, so stick around till the after till after the credits, uh, and we'll have your results for you. So, Thomas, I know you're you're watching. So, uh, get your last uh, ones in and get ready to make that roll and tell us who the winner is. So, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. You guys have anything to say before we we sign off for the credits? Yay, gay! And now I've got I know a pretty wraith boy. Always think about her. Thanks to the chat. So you're so welcome. It. You're <laughs> so welcome. So very welcome. Uh, just keep in mind too, if it's okay with you guys, cast members, we're gonna come back right after the credits for just a minute, just to do the the giveaway. The exciting reveal. <laughs> All right, take us to credits, Faye. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh, it's the hand signal, which means we are back to live. Um, 
thank you for the cheer, uh, PDM. Um, I think the, the total's already done and, and we're ready to go, but we're going to count that for you next week. So don't uh, forget to uh, tune in next week. Um, Thomas, do you have a result for us? Well, I have a number. Can someone roll a D, 1D69 in uh, in 20? And no, that's not a joke. That's a number of study we have. Oh, that's really funny. Dash R space 1D69 on roll 20, and we're going to have a number, and we're, we're going to see. Nice. <laughs> 30. 30 even. Thirty even, so that would be uh, PDM one one four seven one six. PDM one, yay! Hey, PDM, uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna send you a message here. Uh, if I, as soon as I figure out how, um, we're gonna do it. I'm clicking things. Whisper, okay. Hi, uh, and then we'll talk, get your info, send you your reward. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat place. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to raid another channel and support their numbers as well. Uh, but we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.